Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of 2023 where we will already be looking at the hardest Olympiad that is around. The China Math Olympiad was just held at the end of December and is one of the earliest Olympiad in the cycle because there are still many more rounds of team selection tests to come. So without further ado, let us take a look at what problem 1 has installed for us. So for this problem, we have two sequences A and, A -N and B -N, which are positive terms. And AN plus 1 is described by this rule, and BN plus 1 is described by this rule. So these are complicated looking rules. Before taking a look at the sub-problems, let us first try and better understand these uh, rules over here. So when we are faced with a complicated looking rule, one of the natural things to try is to actually work out some simple cases in order to get a better understanding. So for example, we could consider, let's pretend that A1 is equal to 1 and see what are the first few terms like? So we could say, for example, okay, A2 is the previous term minus 1 over 1 plus the reciprocal. So if we plug in, it's 1 over uh, 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1. So this gives you half. Okay, let's work out one more term. So A3 equals the previous term minus 1 over 1 plus the sum of reciprocals of previous term. So if we plug in, A2 is half, then minus 1 over 1 plus reciprocal of 1, reciprocal of half. So if you work this out, it's half minus a quarter equals to a quarter. Okay, maybe you haven't developed enough comfort yet, but not to worry. So usually what I would do is work out another example. So let's say a1 is equals to 2. So in this case, we have, again, a2 is a1 minus 1 over 1 plus reciprocal. Because 2 minus 1 over 1 plus reciprocal of 2. So if you work out the math, it's 4 thirds. A3 is A2 minus 1 over 1 plus the sum of the previous reciprocals. So you have A2 minus 1 over 1 plus reciprocal of 2, reciprocal of 4 thirds. So if you work out the math, it's 8 9. So if you recall, in the previous example, we have 1 half than 1 quarter. And now we have 2 and 4 thirds, which is 2 thirds of the previous term, and 8 9, which is 2 thirds of the previous term. So you might speculate, actually, would the AN form a geometric progression? Once we actually have such a postulate, it is then quite easy to formulate a rigorous statement to prove. So this actually sharpens what we are looking out for. So now we want to formulate a geometric progression, and to do so, we should find the common ratio. And this is quite easy. We start with A1, and then we work out what A2 is in order to find a common ratio. So A2 is given by this thing, which you can simplify by bringing A1 to the top. To get this and if we because we want the common ratio it's natural to extract out a1 and we get a2 equals to a1 times this term which by our postulate we'll want to set this as the common ratio so of course this is not a proof yet but by writing a2 in this way we can very easily form our hypothesis that a n is equals to a1 uh common ratio to power of n minus one and once we have this hypothesis is actually quite natural to say, let's prove this by induction. So we form this hypothesis and we prove this by induction. And this is actually quite a standard exercise uh, for induction. So I'll not go over the details and leave it to the uh, viewer to try it out. Now, you might think, how about B, the rule for B? Maybe it also has some simple closed form. Well, if we work out the first few terms uh, by taking b1 equals 1, for example, you will realize that you will not get a geometric progression, and the rule can be quite hard to find. But if you work out in terms of b1 uh, generally, you will be able to write b2 in this form. And then if you try to work out b3, you will be able to get this expression. And from here, you will be able to postulate that perhaps bn is given by the following expression. This time, again, once you have the hypothesis, you can prove by induction. But I must qualify that this time the induction is much harder. Uh, generally, I think the, the solution will involve you forming two sentences, uh, two hypotheses, one for the uh, denominator here to help you with the hypothesis uh, proving of the main statement. So I'll leave this to the reader to work out. Uh, instead of going over the algebra, I would like to focus on the key ideas of this proof. But I must qualify that this is one of the harder parts of the problem, which I have uh, conveniently skipped over. So, but nonetheless, now that we have a better understanding of the sequences AN and BN, let us take a look at the subparts. So for part one, we are given that uh, A100, B100 equals A101, B101. And we are supposed to find the value of A1 minus B1. So quite naturally, 
we want to rewrite the given condition as a condition about the ratios of a's and the ratio of b's. And this is because if we recall the closed form expression over here, once we have the ratios of successive terms, it's quite easy to work out that uh, the ratio of successive a in this case is uh, 1 over the common ratio, which is this. And the ratio of the successive b here is just the last term of uh, the product in b101, which is given by this. So now that we have this expression, we can simplify it as 1 plus this equals 1 plus this. So a1 is equal to b1 plus 199. So a1 minus b1 is simply 199. So part 1, actually the uh, motivation from start to finish is uh, quite straightforward, but the algebra is extremely tedious. Uh, you, you might not have felt the tedious part, that's because I skipped over the hard induction. But on the other hand, part 2, actually there's not a lot of tedious algebra because it doesn't even involve the closed form expression that I derived earlier on. But the uh, way to prove part 2 actually involves a clever trick that may not be so obvious and, and it can be quite hard to uh, arrive at. So let us take a look at what is this clever trick. So for part 2, we have a100 equals b99, and we are supposed to determine which is larger between a100 plus b100 and a101 plus b101. So the first observation we'll make, actually you might have made this observation even before starting the problems, is that the a1 is, uh, the ai's are strictly decreasing, and this is because the next term of ai's is given by the previous term minus things that are positive. And uh, on the other hand, the bi's are strictly increasing because the next term is given by the previous term plus something strictly positive. And this string of inequalities are connected by this equality given here. So let us keep this uh, observation at the back of our mind. Now, let us try and figure out which is the larger between these two. So there are a number of ways you can compare two terms. One is to take the ratio, but that will give you something that is quite uh, ugly. Instead, we'll take the sum, which is actually much uh, less often considered, uh, not the sum but the difference, and the difference is something that's much less often considered. But in this case, there's a, actually a motivation to this because if you take the difference, you will get the difference of successive a's and the difference of successive b's. And we do have an expression for that because the difference of successive a's is this thing and the difference of successive b's is this thing. So in this case, this expression here simplifies to this, uh, Giga term here minus this giga term. And at first, it might look that you are converting something simple into like giga terms, but realize that now, in order to determine whether this is positive or negative, we can very simply compare the sum of reciprocals versus the sum of reciprocals. And that's because, let's say if this is uh, smaller, uh, sorry, or, or rather, let's say if we determine that this sum of reciprocals is bigger then this term here will be smaller than this term, and this whole thing will be less than zero, from which we can conclude that A100 plus B100 is the larger one. So it becomes a question about comparing these two sum of reciprocals, and actually you have already most of the terms being comparable, and this is because B1 is less than A1, B2 is less than A2, and so on, until B99 is less than A99. Now, rather than using all the way until 99, I'll be using all the way until only 98 for now. Uh, and this will give you sum of the reciprocals up to 98 is bigger than sum of reciprocals up to 98 for uh, the A side. So the reason why we left out uh, 99 and 100 now is because firstly, you cannot compare 100. You can compare 99, but instead I'll be reserving B99 to take care of A100. This is because I have this equality here. So right now, I have an additional uh, pair of terms that I compared. And what is left for me to compare is 1 over B100 and 1 over A99. Now, we have to cross our fingers and ask ourselves, is this inequality true? Notice that if this direction is true, then we can sum up the three expressions here and conclude that the left uh, sum of reciprocals is bigger than the right sum and we are done with the problem. Now, of course, if the inequality is not true, we cannot conclude anything because this is bigger than, then this is smaller than, nothing can be concluded. But if this is bigger than, everything lines up nicely. So let us take a look at whether this part is true. And we can uh, cross the rearranged terms and we have, is A99 bigger than B100? Now, 
it looks like this is a bit difficult to find out because if you look at this part, A99 is bigger than A100 and B99 again is bigger than B99, uh, A, sorry, B100 is bigger than B99. So looks like both of these terms are just bigger than this e uh, equal term here. So there's nothing that can be concluded right off the bat. But let us recall again our trick of introducing successive differences. And this time, what we'll be doing is, okay, we have this thing, we want to determine whether it's positive or negative. By itself, we can't do anything. We want to introduce a successive term. So this motivates us subtracting A100 plus B99. Notice that this uh, movement that I've done here is effectively subtracting and adding the same term because of this equality. So doing this movement uh, introduces zero to the expression. So nothing happens, but I have now introduced a successive difference and another successive difference here. So once again, I can convert them into this gigaterm minus this gigaterm. And it becomes again a question about whether the reciprocal is less than the other reciprocal. So in this case, indeed, because B1 is less than A1, B2 is less than A2 and so on. So we have this inequality is true, which means that this thing is bigger than zero uh, as we desired and hoped for. So that is really all to part two. You can see that the algebra is not very complicated, but uh, the it involves a clever trick and the motivation for it can be quite hard to find. But nonetheless, I hope I've motivated, provide enough motivation for the solution. And that is all we'll be covering in this video. Hope uh, you enjoy the problem. Stay tuned to the channel for more math videos and see you soon.